Awesome. Cool. Hey, Gabriel, how are you doing Hi. today? I'm very good. How are you? Ah, oh, doing doing awesome. So it's so great to have Gabriel Sismondi, who's lead architect at HSBC. And uh, Gabriel's going to be talking about event-driven digital transformation. So the stage is all yours, Gabriel. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And uh, I guess you could yeah, get slides, get screen sharing going and stuff yeah. here. Right on. Cool. I will get out of your way. Yeah. So, um, well, thanks for the introduction. Um, as you said, I'm Gabriel. Um, I work as a lead architect in HSBC. Um, I've been working in IT for um, more than 10 years now. Um, and uh, I've been very interested in the last few years in digital transformation um, and how it kind of relates to technology. So I'm gonna try to talk about event-driven cultural transformation. Um, I'll tell you what it means um, in a bit. Um, again, just try because digital transformation, as, as we all know, it's um, it's a very uh, complex and, and difficult thing, and cultural transformation is even harder. So um, I was trying to get my my head around to find a. Um, you, you know, all the information I could about um, digital transformation. And, uh, you know, I think we all have um, seen many, many times this, uh, this phrase or something similar, um, you know, saying that successful digital transformation actually begin with cultural change. And uh, I've been a huge belie believer of that myself. Uh, for for many many years, and I still think that cultural change is uh, a very very important piece of digital transformation. But then, as I started to work uh, more and more uh, with with big organizations, not only now in HSBC, but even as as a as a vendor before with financial services and and other big big companies, um, I started to realize that. Culture isn't that that easy to touch, and it sometimes feels very very far from uh, from the, you know the technical people, from engineers, from developers, and and that sometimes uh, makes people feel like they can't have an impact in what they do because you know if digital transformation is about culture change, but if you can't do anything to change culture, then you you don't have an impact in the organization. So I started to dig a bit more into digital transformation. And what's surprising is that um, it's a bit like DevOps. There doesn't seem to be like an official definition of digital transformation. Um, you know, it, no one really knows what digital transformation is about. Everyone talks about digital transformation. Everyone says how to go through a digital transformation, but no one actually uh, defines it clearly. There are a few definitions out there, uh, but no one is, is really precise. Um, so is it about just technology? Um, is it about agile or DevOps? Is it about changing processes or, or the customer experience? Um, I think there's a lot of things that need to be answered. So, you know, in my research, the more, the more uh, I was looking into the, into the, uh, the definition of digital transformation. Um, I ended up looking um, into Living Digital, uh, which uh, is a very nice book. And uh, it talks about um, becoming digital masters. Rather than talking about digital transformation, it actually tries to define what digital masters are. And the transformation is the process uh, towards becoming digital masters. Um, and uh, in, in their study, um, writing this book, they found that basically digital ma masters uh, tend to um, have two, two things, um, two, two dimensions which are uh, very similar one to the other and are that um, they do technology in a certain way. So they have um, a certain way of addressing digital capabilities and, and also they lead the change in a certain way. And that's what we call leadership capabilities. And uh, um, most of the time, digital masters tend to 
overperform uh, to uh, do much better than the normal company, regular companies. In fact, uh, some of those companies outperform others by 26% or even more. Now, what I found even more interesting about um, you know, the, the world definition of digital masters um, is that digital masters see technology as a way to change the, the, the way they do business. So uh, I'm gonna pause for a second here because uh, at this stage, uh, things um, started to become very, very interesting for me uh, because effect effectively, uh, I started to see possibilities of having an impact of um, changing things, uh, starting from a different from a different point rather than focusing on culture, which is still super important. And, you know, we know it's a key component of digital transformation, but I started to think, what does change mean? What if, if we go back to that very, uh, to the phrase that we read at the very beginning, what if instead of thinking about cultural change, um, we were just to think about change? So, um, if a successful digital transformation begins with change, uh, then any one of us is actually empowered uh, to change something. And, uh, you know, we know already that um, in the very definition of, of um, digital masters, technology is, uh, is an important piece of the puzzle. So I started to think, what can we change um, as engineers, uh, as, as people within technology, how can we enable digital transformation uh, starting from what is very close to ourselves? So um, that kind of led me to what is that I want to change? What is one of the most important things uh, for me as an engineer? Um, and I think most of the time it's about uh, speeding up value delivery. Um, I think that this is, this is something that's very, uh, that's, that's key for everyone that works in development uh, and that wants to deliver value to customers. Um, I guess many of us um, know that within very big organizations, um, requirements and processes uh, make releasing new features a, a, a very long and, and, uh, and difficult process. There's a lot of time that we waste um, in communicating with other teams, with other systems. Um, and most of the time, unfortunately, people uh, are the biggest cause of delay. Um, and the reason being is that um, whenever we have to rely on someone else to do something, we are basically waiting. Um, and we are waiting for an amount of time that we, we don't know very well. And, and we have to chase the other people. We have to, uh, to understand where they are with their things. And, and this makes things very, very complex. So I really started to think, what if we could use uh, you know, technology, what we know very well, as I said before, um, as a catalyst for transforming uh, all this, uh, all this uh, pieces in the puzzle, um, all the bits inside the process that are very uh, complicated and and very slow. And uh, and that led me uh, to rethink, in a way, uh, the the world delivery process. Um, you know, it's it's very it's very easy to think and and to. Uh, and to refer to the most successful organizations, uh, digital organizations, such as, I don't know, Facebook, Google, or Amazon, um, you know, it's very, it's very easy to think of them um, as a case study. But actually, uh, in a way, they are born digital. Um, they, they don't have to, uh, to rethink the way they do things because they have um, already a culture that, that works uh, in that direction. But uh, for organizations that have to go through this transformation, we need to find ways um, to tackle 
uh, this 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 problem, and we have really to find um, new ways of um, of communicating and and navigating processes because processes get in the way quite often. So uh, in my mind, when I when I was thinking about processes and when I was thinking about ways of communicating, um, I started thinking, what if everything we do inside an organization uh, could be seen as an event. So what if we uh, were to track every action, everything that's between me, uh, engineer, developer, um, product owner, everything that's between me and uh, the end goal of delivering uh, that functionality. Um, if everything could be seen in an event, maybe we can apply certain patterns that we use in technology um, to make those uh, events work better and faster. So effectively, the, um, the transition to an event first thinking uh, started to make sense in my mind. Uh, and there are many reasons why. Uh, first of all, events are immutable, um, and and you know, especially in, in the financial sector, but I guess in many enterprises, um, auditability is also a very important piece of the puzzle. So events, um, because they are immutable and they represent something that happens in a certain point in time, they are also uh, very easy to audit. Um, also, thinking as um, an event, a way of describing things. Um, you know, we can we can ap apply certain standards. We can use a shared language that represents all the events um, inside our organization. Um, in fact, there are also open standards for events. Um, I'm not sure it's graduate, graduated yet, but um, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is um, has cloud events as one of its projects. Um, so you know there are common ways we, we can define a structure and a and a um, shared language for for these events. Um, it also allows you know low level of coupling between our systems, and uh, in this case our system might be steps inside our process, um, which sometimes are going to be performed by other systems, uh, sometimes are going to be performed by humans, and. Uh, in a way also, uh, you know, if we keep track of all the events, um, we can always get back to uh, a certain point in time if we apply the same events to the system, because, um, you know, as, as a principle, all our events should lead us um, to have the same results every time they are applied in the same way. So what does that mean from, from a, you know, from a kind of, pseudo architecture point of view. Um, it would mean that if we adapt a common language and, and we create effectively, uh, let's say an event bus that could be, you know, could use a uh, pub sub system or queues or, or any other technology. We're not, we're not really focused on technology here. Um, then uh, we will have inside our system, many, many actors. Uh, we will have teams, uh, but we also have uh, automated services um, and also we could have uh, an audit service, which is just an uh, absolute subscriber to this event bus. And, and really it's just looking at everything that happens. That means that a team can initiate, um, can initiate something and then um, another service can pick up that event and do something and then publish the result back to the event bus. Um, or maybe is some other team that needs to pick it up and that needs to do something. Um, sometimes it might be a manual task, but the key thing here is that uh, the other person uh, in, in the second team that picks up the event uh, will know how to read that event and will know what are the actions that come out of that event and then will publish an update once the event is being processed. Um, so effectively, it doesn't really matter if it's a new one or another system that is processing the event. Now, um, I'll show you some, some uh, um, examples uh, like in, in, real, in real world. Um, 
One of those could be infrastructure provisioning, for example. This is uh, very, um, very easy to think because it's fully automated. So let's say a user uh, that operates inside a controlled cloud account uh, needs to request the provisioning of um, a set of services inside the cloud account that can be just provisioned by a primary cloud account because it has higher privilege. So it will uh, publish um, a request for infrastructure components in the events of us. Uh, so the service on the primary cloud account will pick that up, uh, will eventually uh, provision the infrastructure that needs to be to be created, and then will uh, again publish an event, uh, an update event uh, on the event bus, and uh, and the user uh, could be subscribed to to uh, you know an infra updates channel and could be notified on completion. So this is very simple to do. is is very uh, it's something that we we actually do uh, um, inside the organization, and and it's uh, it's very powerful. At the same at the same time, it's it's very safe. It's auditable and it matches all the standards and enable us to provision infrastructure in the same way over and over again uh, using um, an event driven approach. Now um, another example, um, very important in financial services. Um, is for example compliance remediation. So um, because of security uh, and because of regulation, we need to make sure we're uh, all the time 100% compliant in everything we do. So um, in this case, for example, the user could be um, could be changing something in a controlled environment. Uh, the controlled environment will uh, generate a, a change event that is going to be published again to our event bus. Um, the remediation service is subscribed to the event bus and uh, will um, will get the event, will understand the changes, and eventually, if needed, will apply remediation actions. And once again, uh, it will notify um, the user by publishing again to the to the event bus, and and the user will get notified. So those are th these are very simple examples, um, but at the same time that can be um, quite powerful. So now I've, I've touched on infrastructure because that's a very simple use case, um, but actually um, the potential use cases of, um, of this approach are much more. Um, so as I was saying before, one of the most important things and the, the ultimate goal for us would be to standardize all the steps even those that require human intervention. So one of the um, one of the biggest problems when it comes to actually delivering um, our email threads, because they all they all depend on on um, human interaction, but they are very very difficult um, to actually uh, track and 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 to um, trigger action on those. Also, uh, it would be great if uh, by doing this and by standardizing the way we communicate, we could reduce the time we spend in meetings because effectively, if we share a common language, uh, then um, it's much easier to understand what we're doing. Um, so on the other side, probably there's, there's no need to explanation every time we do something because we effectively share the same, uh, the same vocabulary. Um, another use case is um, an easy access to services. Um, so effectively, uh, so service for developers and for teams. Um, this is a huge one uh, because effectively, um, as I was showing before, it already happens for infrastructure and for other things. And it's um, incredibly important, especially in organizations that are very, very big, where there are um, um, teams inside the organization that tend to have um, higher privilege than others that need to release um, certain type of patterns. Uh, for example, we can't we can't just go crazy and let everyone spin up whatever they want in the cloud because um, that would be uh, effectively um, potentially harmful for the organization. So we need to have this type of automation in place. And uh, eventually uh, get to a point where we can have 
end-to-end um, -end automation for, for the whole process. Uh, effectively, when I say end-to-end -end automation, it's probably unachievable, but it means uh, partially automate even those human interventions where um, someone, um, because of, of our um, system, our event-driven system, uh, the, the amount of effort that, needs, that the human needs to put in is uh, just a few clicks. And, and so it would be almost like an automation. But also um, another, another important piece is uh, data and analytics um, and, and ultimately audit. In fact, uh, data and analytics actually um, are um, incredibly important uh, for when it comes to understanding our digital transformation and, and moving forward with it. Um, so in, in all this process, uh, of course, we, we believe that uh, customer experience is key um, because uh, we, we're building something that uh, needs to be uh, accessible and that effectively needs to empower everyone inside the organization so that we can uh, move together and uh, improve velocity um, and, and do things um, faster and better. So one of the things uh, that it's very important to have is, for example, uh, REST APIs um, in front of, in front of, um, of services so that we can maybe uh, most of the time abstract uh, the complexity of, of the system. Also, um, it enables us to create portals and, and common line interface. Um, common line interface, for example, are very, very powerful for developers so that they can uh, effectively have the freedom to build things, uh, to work uh, in a more flexible way, but staying compliant 100% of the times. And also, uh, because everything is an event, uh, we can um, extensively use notifications and, uh, and, and uh, you know, enable um, people to stay up to date on what they need to stay up to date by subscribing to certain channels and, and, and maybe um, reduce the noise that sometimes is caused by emails. So the impact is, uh, can be huge, um, you know, even in, in the, uh, I'm not going to lie, this is not something that's 100% implemented um, everywhere. It would be great, uh, but even in the small areas where we are using even driven approach, uh, for example, for infrastructure provision, provisioning, um, you know, it, the, the impact is amazing. And, and um, we can support uh, our decision with data. Um, and that data can actually be used again to drive the cultural change because um, I, I love to think that, um, you know, cultural change um, and, and digital transformation in general um, can be seen um, even um, a bit as, a, as like, like a diet or, or, a, or a fitness program. Um, so you don't necessarily have to, um, to believe in it from the very beginning. Of course you need, you need it in the long term uh, in order to stay healthy and to stay fit you need to change your your culture towards um, you know diet and, and exercise but uh, maybe even if you don't believe in it at the very beginning but you do it because someone is telling you to do that you're gonna see the results so if we have data to uh, to prove that what we're doing works that that data can be used to then enable the cultural change and uh, um, also, of course, you know, what, um, another very important um, part is that effective, effectiveness in communication um, also enable us to have uh, smaller feedback loops. And so, you know, do more trial and error faster and, and eventually, eventually catch things before they become uh, bigger. Um, so I, I, I'd like to really, um, to really finish the presentation with, um, with a bit of a of a change on the on the phrase we've seen before, um, and and just thinking that successful digital transformation are about embracing change events. Um, so culture is still one of the most important things. Uh, it will always be, but uh, you know if you if you have been thinking thinking until now that 
um, you couldn't have an impact because you're not, uh, um, you know, talking with leadership or driving the culture or you're not uh, um, scrum master, ninja, guru. Um, that's not true. You know, we can uh, embrace change in technology. We can uh, help the organization move faster and eventually that could drive change, cultural change and um, help us uh, transform. Thank you. That's, that's all on my side. All right. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Gabriel, for, for the presentation. Uh, we don't really have some time for questions. Uh, you can follow up. But one thing that I wanted to say is that I personally love this event-based approach. And when I was looking at your talk, immediately the first thing that I thought was Datomic. Datomic is this database done by the people of Cognitech. And they have this idea that you don't delete the data, you retract the data. And so it's kind of the same thing as the event approach that you can always go back instead of just having the latest view of your database. And this thing is mind blowing. And I think we should really apply this to regular application and not just banks. And in fact, Cognitech has been acquired by a bank, which proves that maybe they were right. All right, yeah. I just wanted to say that. I mean, it was so mind blowing. Said, yeah, yes, that is what I was trying to. It's good to see that somebody's going on the same direction. Um, all right, Thank you. so, uh, well, it's gonna be a virtual applause because we're not on live. Uh, but this concludes our first part of the conference. You can see that Tony had to step out. You know, I'm gonna step in and present uh, this part of the conference. We're gonna take 20 minutes break and we'll see you very soon with the second part of the, of the event. Um, have a good lunch and I'll see you later. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye.